Hello everybody and welcome to this introductory video. Today I will be talking about ethical hacking and I will also introduce you to the course itself. So first off, you might have noticed that the term ethical hacking is composed out of two words. You have ethical and you have hacking. Now hacking, uh, the definition of hacking is quite broad. I mean it encompasses a very wide range of activities. However, if you actually go to any of the online dictionaries pretty much and if you type in the term hacking, generally it will say that it has something to do with computers. I cannot say that that is not true, however, that is only a small portion of the definition. Rather instead, the act of hacking is actually having any system and I mean any system, not just a computer system, not just a digital system. In fact, it doesn't. the system doesn't even need to contain any electronic parts. So, literally any system. Having it do something that you intended it to do as opposed to what it was designed to do. Now, here is one short example uh, that has been cited over and over again. You have a lock, basically. You have a door lock in your house. Everybody has one. Well, I sincerely hope that you have one. And the purpose of that lock is to prevent anybody is to prevent intruders from entering. So anybody who does not have a key cannot enter. Uh, people, but people people enter without a key anyway because they pick the lock and then they enter, and that itself could be considered an act of hacking also an act of burglary, but that's another, that's another subject. Anyway, the ethical side of it would be when you have these large automobile industry uh, manufacturers and then they hire people, they hire these burglars to come and pen test their locks. So basically they pay them very good sums of money to go to their factories and to try to unlock their cars. Uh, this doesn't need to apply only to locks for cars, it can also apply for your door locks. Manufacturers of pretty much all sorts of locks, they hire people to actually try and pick lock them. And then if they succeed doing it, and if they succeed, they pay them a very good sum of money. I do believe that prices for one car manufacturer, they went up to 1 million euros if you manage to break their locks. But what I'm trying to say here is that they have, the ethical side of it would be when you have a permission to do it, when it's within the constraints of the law. And the act of hacking itself can be within the constraints of the law, but doesn't necessarily need to be. Anyway, we will not be focusing on those types of locks today uh, or during this course. During this course, I will teach you how to penetrate networks, how to exploit systems, how to break into computers, how to uh, compromise routers, etc. You will be, after, the, after you've finish this course after you've absorbed all the information in it you will gain the ability to do some serious damage now because of that I wish to give a disclaimer here so first off I do not encourage any sort of illegal activity furthermore I strongly advise against it and I am against it so you do not have any legit need to do anything that is against the law with the knowledge that you're going to get du during this course because you're going to get some pretty good knowledge and you can abuse it very easily. It's not that difficult to abuse it. The, the opportunities are everywhere. They're endless because people tend to use insecure systems or they use secure systems but they don't know how to operate or configure them and then in turn those secure systems become insecure. But what I'm trying to tell you is uh, there really is no need. I mean if you want to do it for the money or something like that you can make the same amount if not more in a perfectly legitimate way. Uh, people will pay you to actually test their networks and to see if you can find any vulnerabilities in them and then report them, perhaps even fix them. 
so however if you do decide to do something uh, against the law in any country uh, I am not responsible for it first of that is what I want to say I do not claim responsibility for it as I have already stated that I am doing this for purely for educational purposes and I do not advocate the use of this material for any sort of illegal purpose. Now, I hope you understand why I had to make this disclaimer, and I, this is not what I said. These are not just empty words. I really do stand by it, and that is my philosophy as well. In any case, uh, during, the, during this course, I will show you numerous examples, methods, you will need some prerequisites over which I will go in the next tutorial. But you're in for a ride, so sit down, be patient. That is a very important thing in this line of work. Patience, because everybody has, I mean, everybody out there, I mean, if you are looking at this tutorial now, if you've typed in the term ethical hacking, I'm guessing that you've seen some, I'm guessing at some point of time in your lives, like myself, you have seen a movie that involves some sort of hacking with computers, and you see this terminal, and you just see them typing in something there, and it just break, and it just basically works. It works within five minutes or something like that. Let me tell you something. That is not, that has nothing to do with the real world, or very little to do with the real world. In the real world, people spend countless sleepless nights trying to trying to do something trying to obtain access trying to bypass a pa password protected file or something of a kind in a server trying to escalate privileges trying to inject in a SQL injection or something of a kind and they not only spend countless sleepless nights doing it but they also spend a long time planning preparing and getting a general idea of what they can do, how they can execute an attack, etc. These are not things that you will be able to do in fi within five minutes after you sit and open up your computer, your desktop computer or whatever. Uh, you will need time, you will need patience, but above all, you will need to be curious. Uh, curiosity is one of the first steps here. And obvious, obviously, since you've actually chosen to listen to this tutorial, to go through it, you do possess it already. You just need to build on it a little bit more, and you'll be where you want to be. In any case, I hope to see you in the next tutorial, and I bid you farewell.